You've learned how America was made great for white individuals through the mistreatment and exclusion of Black people. You've learned our history from the practice of slavery to Jim Crow laws, segregation, redlining, the civil rights movement, and the school to prison pipeline. Black people were brought to this country. We came to do the agricultural work in the South and the textile work in the North. You've seen racial disparities, economic, health, and education disparities. If I right now decided that I wanted to play Monopoly with you, and for 400 rounds of playing Monopoly, I didn't allow you to have any money, I didn't allow you to have anything on the board, I didn't allow for you to have anything, and then we played another 50 rounds of Monopoly, and everything that you gained and you earned while you were playing that round of Monopoly was taken from you. That was Tulsa, that was Rosewood. Those are places where we built black economic wealth, where we were self-sufficient, where we owned our stores, where we owned our property, and they burned them to the ground. How can you win? You can't win. The game is fixed. And now the systemic disparities are only intensifying. The murder of a black man on viral video woke up a lot of people. But now what are you going to do? I was kind of trying to figure out my place in, in the racial justice space. And all of a sudden things happened with Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, uh, George Floyd, among so many others. But what made those three stand out is that they were recorded. They went viral uh, and the images and the videos really captured my attention and I couldn't, I couldn't look away. It was at that point where I realized I had to, to take an action because lives were literally being lost. I don't know if you remember how you felt in like March and April and May, but there's that like, I want to do something, but I'm not supposed to go outside. So, <laughs> so like, how do I connect to something? And then how do I make sure that it's um, meaningful and it feels urgent and it, it is a way for me to like, feel like I'm activating. It's about time. It's been time. <laughs> The resilience of Black people throughout history is calling to us. Black Americans struggling for their freedom and for equity. This is our moment in history. This is our justified anger moment. It was important that, especially downtown businesses, make it known that we stand with our Black comrades and this isn't about property, and we're talking about people over property. It's just exposure, it's been happening forever, and now we're just forced to look at it. I think that was a huge thing that Nehemiah decided to do with their Justified Anger Initiative and the Black History course was, once we get educated, we can kind of figure out how to, you know, create some long, meaningful partnerships and friendships that, that can really start turning this community into a community that works for all of us. What I really appreciate about the opportunities that I've been able to do with Nehemiah is that they've let me use my skills. I've had opportunities that let me do the things that I know I can do. It all starts with relationships, and the relationships are only going to succeed if I'm in the right place first. So, you know, I gotta, I gotta start with me. That's how this thing begins to to change. Is is on the on the one to one level, and in those conversations, there's. There's something remarkable that happens in sitting across the table from somebody hearing somebody's, you know, story and the times that I've actually been able to really actively listen in that, that's immensely powerful. Our work of anti-blackness and racism is far from over. We need your financial support now to strengthen our organization and its efforts as we train more black leaders and as we train non-black allies to be mobilized as a transformational force that can help to bring about and demand change in society. Please help us now. This is our moment in history. This is our justified anger moment.